I'm just curious who plays what instrument. I didn't really pay attention to that last time. Is Ida playing the ocarina? Deku playing the trumpet oddly fits. <laughs> fits so well. Invisible girl playing the largest instrument, compensating much. And if I'm seeing this correctly, it looks like we have like eight guitars, but no drum set. No drums. Hey Todoroki, what kind of food do you like? <laughs> the way he asked that. Man, I like my noodles piping hot. And we're so different, we're I guess. Different. Yeah. Up until now, we've had 10 people in this remedial training class. But starting today, we'll have 11. Who's the 11th? I don't want to distract them. <gasps> oh, no. Showtime! He's about to embarrass his son. You never should have failed <laughs> oh, no. in, first place. in front of all the other failures. How embarrassing. Why is he here? Never forget that time he nudged that paper out of my hands. <laughs> Look who's standing next to him! Oh, I'm surprised he didn't get there first. I mean, I guess Endeavor cuts a pretty striking profile. Hey, second year at Chiquette. Oh, it's Kami. Right, she wasn't there for the exam. That makes sense. Well, it's not like the heroes or police realize what was going on either. We need a new symbol of peace before things get even more dangerous. Back to the symbol of peace idea. Interesting. It's not going to be Endeavor. It's not Endeavor. Don't look at Endeavor. He is not the symbol of peace. Gang Orca. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got even more disappointments today. Oof. What shame you must feel to be standing before me, given how easy the exam was. He respects Todoroki and, and Bison, if I remember correctly, though. There's something I've realized while observing your training thus far. There's Y'all nothing suck. heroic about any of you, your yeah. bottom feeders. Nothing but rotten fish turds. Sir, yes, sir. I appreciate that his, his insult is on theme with his image. Do you even want to be a hero? Oh, no. First of all, I'm not a fish turd. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, fertilizer is integral. Wrong! Do you expect to be praised just because you have powerful attacks? Sir, yes, sir! <laughs> no. He tried. He was trying to please him. It didn't work out. It's time you start training a new muscle. The one that beats in your chest. If you the hold brain. that hand <laughs> to someone in trouble, will they take it? Not as you are now. It's fine to have fangs, but when a life is on the line, you must have trust. He's, he's being hard on them. This hard on them because he believes in them. He knows what they can do. He can see their potential. Show that you can come to an understanding with them. That's are these the hired extras too? Face. Oh my god, no. Oh no, please not children. Uh, the something of the heart. Megami's heart. I need you to try to listen and behave! No, no, she's just at, at her wit's end. Elementary school. The worst elementary school kids in Japan. <laughs> Look, this, means this is unfair. This is unfair. You think you are, There's something just wrong about this whole brat. activity. Oh, so you're one of those. A grown-up who thinks they can get their way by Is this hero from, from Fruits Basket? Get a word in Pick this up for me, why don't you? Hey, what's this stupid thing? Tell me, what is it? A wiener? Um, excuse me. <laughs> it totally looks like a wiener, though. It's a wiener. I assure you that it's not. How can we be really sure that it's not a wiener? <laughs> oh no, these kids are awful. <laughs> They're the worst. Dumb. Dumb. You're harder than you are, loser. Kill them, Bison. <laughs> uh, yeah, so explain to me again why I'm part of this group. We didn't get a chance to see you in action at the exam. This is an exam, honest, this is just torture. like you wouldn't be very good at this. <laughs> oh no. There, oh. You see? I get along super with kids. Uh, yeah, I mean that kid's feelings gonna drastically change depending on how old he is. My class is full of problem children. No matter We've what noticed. Children, <laughs> We've noticed. By day's end, I believe my trainees will have changed your students. Oh, wow, that's, that's a lot. This is the hardest challenge that UA has yet experienced. What is, to like, Endeavor and All Might think about this? Even the guy with good advice is just speechless. Even present Mike is speechless. Nobody likes this. Nobody wants this. This is just cool. That's it. The MC and me can't take it anymore. <laughs> Where's the mood music? No one can hold Mike in. We're gonna forget this floozy. Yeah, let's get out of here. That's pretty ahead of the curve. In other words, floozy. You wanted to talk? I'm sure there's a stairwell we could find somewhere and have a nice conversation. Just listen. This should be good. I resolved more incidents than anyone else. Which makes him the number one hero, but... And yet, I can feel it. Some unseen thing that you built up in your prime is beginning to crumble. What does it mean to be a symbol? 
Interesting. It's kind of a big deal to even see someone like Endeavor asking All Might for advice. You know that's painful for him. And there's got to be a bunch of motivations for that. And a big part of that seems to be the fact that he has felt the limits of his own ability. Like he can't muscle through this growing societal problem. He's only one person, which interestingly, Gang Orca was just talking about. So there's a parallel there. And how much of it is the fact that he's constantly getting criticized now that he's technically number one. Like he walked into a room and the kids started making fun of him. That's just his life now. And worse probably because it's on TV and radio and whatever. This is definitely one of those be careful what you wish for situations. Though I guess in some way it's in keeping with the My Hero Academia ethos where you don't capitulate to the problem but you make the choice to do your best and, and rise above it if you can. I mean winning your hearts is like super vague, you know? What are we even supposed to be doing here? This is way weird. Yeah! This girl just has rabies. Like <laughs> These fish starts. I like how she's going with the fish starts thing. These early elementary school years are an important time for character development. Yeah, this is when they choose their, their gangs. Because this is Japan, and that's what I've learned about Japan recently. Everyone is just in a gang. There's no time for us to bicker with each other. Speaking of rising, <laughs> rising to the challenge. The stupid teacher didn't fulfill her role as a leader, so the brats ended up taking over the class. If they're not listening to her, then somebody else must be in charge here. There's definitely some a ringleader. Kind of kid these little monsters are following. Beat him up, and everyone else falls in line. <laughs> We beat him up and hang him from a post to make an example exactly. out of the punk. Exactly. That's what I said. I thought the idea was for us to be nice. Wow. Be nice to the other kids. Certainly has a unique perspective. <laughs> the teacher. Such an outdated and violent way of solving problems. Hero steps up. <sighs> Should have known it was him. Burned by an ankle biter. Enough already. Just <laughs> I love this. of my commentary. This is A plus work. Are the kids gonna be okay? Most of them. Perhaps he'll pull this off. He started a running commentary. Present Mike must have rubbed off on him. <laughs> I love that self-awareness. I mean, if they didn't do these running voiceovers, could you even call it anime? I will say from experience that children can d defeat you. They can destroy you. As I think a lot of people probably know, I was a teacher for a long time and I taught all ages. And I figured out pretty quickly that one one age I would never, ever, ever do again is like kindergarten and then the first couple grades of school. And the reason for that is, well, all education is sort of daycare to a certain extent. You kind of have to Except that fact. But I feel like that's extra, extra the case when they're super young and you have to deal with a lot of emotion and a lot of like tenderness and emotional volatility. And there was one incident in particular. In the first teaching job I had in Korea, I had a kindergarten class. One of the boys just kept leaning back in his chair like this. And I knew he was going to fall. So I kept like, you know, just correcting his chair. We're all sitting at the same table. Eventually, I just turned to look at one student for maybe five seconds and heard a crash. And he had fallen and like injured his head. Not in any serious way that I know of. It just formed a cut that was bleeding. And from there, all hell broke loose. Like, I was blamed for it. It was all my fault for being negligent. The mother of that boy complained. And from then on, the principal insisted on standing in the room as I was teaching every class until I quit that job. And it was just a little bit too traumatic for me to continue teaching that age. Favorite age is a little bit older. I'd say like between 9 and 12 because they're more fun. They're more like adults. And you can have a lot of real, real fun with them. But they're not teenagers yet, so they're not sullen and, and mopey and self-conscious about what the boys or girls in their class think of them. Is it just me, or are these kids, like, super twisted? Yeah, exactly! So a little violence is necessary! Bakugo, they're just kids. Huh? Well, that's how I was raised, and look, I turned out awesome! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. He, he really did. He's great. You know... Did we get All Might's answer yet about the symbol of the peace? I want to hear it. Spot. By the time I was 20, and because I'd carved my own path. Is this a metaphor? I understood. Climbing this mountain? There was no way I was ever going to reach the top. Yep, it's a metaphor. Talkative today, aren't we? Just answer me! I feel like he's, he's been extra lonely recently. All Might's the only person who could understand him. That's a really tough thing that you can experience. I think we're all sort of used to having a certain amount of the path paved for us in, in the things that we do to a certain extent. But if you really, really are into something, you get far enough along where the people who are paving the path in front of you start to dissipate. There aren't that many anymore. And in fact, I think a lot of the time what you find is people who are quote unquote above you in a certain field often have been put there because other people don't understand what those fields are and they've managed to be convincing. And so if you truly start to get to the top of something or towards the top of something, it can get a little bit lonely. It can get difficult to find camaraderie or find understanding because just the way it works with most things, especially difficult things, you really only understand it if you do it. And so it's hard to have like deep, meaningful, constructive conversations about things when there are many people in the same role. I think I heard PewDiePie say this once a long time ago in a video where he said something along the lines of like, he's always just winging it and who who could he possibly ask for, you know, advice on being the number one YouTuber? You know, there isn't another one. So while I may be, you know, injecting my own thing into it, for me, I get a feeling of loneliness from Endeavor. And it makes sense to me why he would want to reach out to All Might in that way, because All Might is one of the only people that could ever understand this kind of pressure and ever understand this kind of attention. And he's someone towards which Endeavor has, you know, a certain amount of negative sentiment, but that negative sentiment is deeply connected to 
inseparable from respect and recognition of his achievements and accomplishments. I thought that this country needed a hero who could inspire them. So I ran toward that goal at full speed. Is this running a metaphor? <laughs> I ignored the kindness of the people around me and abandoned those dear to me to walk this path. Interesting yeah, that he brings that this up in the explanation. Your former sidekick. Yes, a tragedy. It's nice of him to say. There are many who can't help but dwell on our differences. Oh my! They came to watch us? So cool! Whoa, is that Endeavor? Right, right. The contrast is striking. It was my decision to become a symbol, but you don't have to do that. Instead, take your time and think about the kind of hero you want to be. That's a beautiful answer. I love how he gave him the, the option C answer, where it's not really the answer that Endeavor was looking for, but it's it's more to the point, I think, which is not, how do I become All Might? Because he never will, and no one ever will. I mean, Deku won't either, even though Deku's a lot closer than Endeavor. Mirio can't become All Might, even though Mirio is very, very close to the ideals of All Might. It's sort of not the right question. It's probably useful as a starting point, you know, I think. That's probably what gets a lot of people started, is having role models and having people they admire and wanting to capture a certain feeling. But I think along the way, it's, it's part of a healthy process to make something your own. And I think in the past, I may have interpreted that as being like sour grapes, you know, or giving up. But now I think it's something more along the lines of mistaking the source for the signals, you know, mistaking the thing that you want for the manifestation of that thing that you currently see. I think probably what people want, like Endeavor, is, is pretty basic. It's not necessarily that he needs to be All Might, it's that he wants to live up to his own expectations of excellence. But that's a more broad way to put it. You know, and I think that from experience, once you hit on it, you hit on it and it's sufficient and you, it, it doesn't matter what it looks like necessarily. And a lot of times it surprises you what it looks like. I'm the type of person who sort of leads from imagination. You know, that's where I get the, the source of inspiration for just about everything is to, to fantasize about things that I, I think would be great for me and to find things that just make me feel super excited and to kind of aim it at those things. But then the path towards those things never leads to those things. It leads to some combination of those dreams plus reality or circumstance or just life. And it doesn't make it any less satisfying. In fact, a lot of the times it makes it more satisfying for a couple of reasons. One is that where I end up a lot of the time is just telling of who I actually am as opposed to who I think thought I was or who I imagined myself to be based on what I saw in others. But another part of that is that the reality tends to be more intricate and more detailed and more surprising than my fantasies. And there's a special beauty in that discovery, I think. And also while the finished product, you know, the actual results may differ largely in appearance, it doesn't matter because I'm still hitting at some core thing that I needed that I couldn't previously identify. And it's sort of a beautiful process. It's a, it's a really fun thing to experience. Now how will he win over these youngsters? Let's yeah, what's his method? See. Oh, know, by being I exceedingly attractive. Kids dreaming. <laughs> is there any problem being good looking can't fix? Her, so let's ignore him. Ouch. Stupid five weenies here is boring. Let's go punch the gorilla instead. What kind of person am I? I need them to know that first. I think the problem here is that they just need too much from these kids. You're just doomed to fail if you need the kids in the first place. That just gives them way too much power. Of course they're exploiting it. I feel like this attempt just really set them up. It set them up real bad. My name is not Five Weenies. I am Shoto from UA and I want to be a hero. My father Endeavor is currently the number one hero, but to be frank, I've always hated him and want to- This is a, a lot. Oh, so like. boring. Shoto fail! That was a nice try, Todoroki! <laughs> so supportive. Our mommies and daddies and everyone on TV, they're all wondering if the age of heroes is over. <laughs> this is a very advanced <laughs> world outlook for a little kid. <laughs> you guys aren't fooling anybody! And they have quirks. Wow. This makes Bakugo's child violence idea a little bit more palatable. Those children are strong and believe wholeheartedly that their quirks surpass those of the heroes. They won't hold back against your trainees. These kids actually do seem for formidable. <laughs> oh, we got a, a, a cliffhanger on the child violence. Will Bakugo incinerate children? Stay tuned to find out. Wow. Well, like the students, I really was not expecting that. I was not expecting this, like, Attack of the Children episode. Um, it's one of the most terrifying episodes of the show so far. I can't help but wonder if this is connected to what I feel or suspect based on the intros, I guess, is a growing red swan-like theme of, like, childhood development and that everyone's a, a child inside. Because <laughs> that's what the end credits are. It's them as children and adolescents and showing their growth. There actually probably is a lot that they could learn from these kids about themselves. I mean, Bakugo's talking about what he learned as a child in, in a hilariously unself-aware way. So there's something there, right? Todoroki is looking back to his childhood with disastrous results. What is the solution? I, I don't know. This is this is a tough one. What motivates these kids, I wonder? They probably want like boundaries and limits is my my gut feeling. They want to know where the line is and I guess because they're talented, because they're, they're actually powerful, like they actually have quirks, they haven't found that and I think a, a common reaction in children is disdain, which is partly connected to fear. It's like, me, I'm at, I'm at the top, 
Like, this is my support. This is my, my world, my structure, my society where everyone is so flawed. Like, how am I supposed to trust in the world? And it's really easy to become cynical in that environment, I think. But at the root of it is also sort of a desire. You know, it's a desire for something that's not that. It's a desire for people who actually are adults, let's say, who do have real wisdom that comes from experience, who are not hypocritical, who do not lean on age or role as a placeholder for actual value and intelligence or virtue or whatever, which is an all too common thing, I think, for, for kids, especially precocious kids, you know, to notice that a lot of people in roles of authority treat the authority itself as if that's the thing, you know, that's the reason why they deserve respect or are in a, a role of power. When actually, I think most people would agree, at least on paper, that it's something that should be earned, which can be really frustrating when you can see that yet have no authority. So I don't know, maybe the fight is the answer as long as they don't seriously injure anyone. Or maybe they could just injure that one kid. That might work. <laughs> But that is the end of the second episode of this new arc. It's funny and also reassuring because I feel like we've come back to the show a little bit. I feel like the first part of season four was a departure. And I was wondering if that was just, that was it. It was it was a change that happened. But here we are with another like learning exercise. And it's cool. Yeah.